as it just starts to rain again. You might wonder why I've come out today when it is grey, wet, and a little bit miserable. Especially after uh, having several days that were 27 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. Partly, I've been working uh, so I can actually get out. But also I find it so important, I'm just being stared at by kangaroos again. Um, I find it so important to come out no matter the weather. You've just got to change your subject. There's a plane going overhead. That's really annoying. Hopefully no one will come. I've just decided to block myself in the middle of the path. Um, cup of tea time. Llama Express all the way. So, as I was rudely interrupted before by the plane, why I'm out today on quite a wet, grey, not necessarily a cold day, but a wet and miserable day. I like it. Not many other people are going to be around. Not many other photographers are going to think it's worth going out because the light's not great. And I agree with them to a point, but also the conditions make it more interesting. An overcast day like this means you get quite steady, consistent lighting from above. So you don't have to deal with harsh shadows, you don't have to deal with constant cloud movement, one minute it's bright, one minute it's dark. It's all very, very similar, which is wonderful. I can't believe it, there's another plane. It's like the third time I've done this now. I couldn't be any more directly underneath the flight path. That's what I was saying, hopefully that's quite enough. Yeah, really consistent light, really steady light. Uh, it's wildflower season here, so there's lots of colour, even though it's grey, there's lots of colour around on the ground. Uh, behind me, some fringing lilies, some really beautiful purple flowers with beautiful fringe around them. They've got a few raindrops on them, which is wonderful. Uh, so once I finish my tea, I'll get a few photos of those. Looking forward to that. It's the joy of flowers, there's no rush. You can have a cup of tea, have a biscuit. Just enjoy your surroundings. Other than the plains, it's very, very peaceful. I don't think I've said where I am today. Welcome to John Forest. I come here pretty regularly. Great bird life, kangaroo life, as I mentioned. Even about being out here looking for reptiles, amphibians. You get it all. Dare I say spiders as well. Oh man, that's good. Right, back at it. So I was just walking along the path here and um, I just saw this bit of electric blue dash out in front of me. Out here where we are, that can only mean one thing really and that's a fairy wren, blue fairy wren. Um, this is when knowing your subject really comes handy. This time of year, they're very territorial. They're gonna be living in families. Um, it's the dominant male that's gonna be that blue and they're gonna be pretty local to their patches. Um, so what I've decided to do is just pull up here, get the camera set up, get the tripod set up, and just see when he returns. Um, he, they normally, well in my experience, they normally go back to the same perches. Um, and I've just seen him further down the road, so I know he's still around. Um, the females are still bobbing around somewhere as well. Um, and I can hear them all calling as well. So I'm just gonna sit here for a bit. Um, Black Hawk 2 is just about to land in the tree above me as well. Amazing. Um, that's that noise boy. Yeah, so we'll see what we can get. I think it was pretty obvious the moment I said that piece to camera about knowing the behavior of the birds. They turn up 
Uh, obviously, they didn't turn up, so I waited about 45 minutes. Um, and uh, they were sort of around behind me, but no longer returned to the nice perch that one in front of me. Um, just fine, that's how this game goes. Um, I didn't actually want, I can say this now proudly because I don't have any nice pictures of them. I wasn't expecting or hoping to get them today. Um, the thing with small, small birds like that is they're very fast moving. Uh, so you need either a lot of light or, um, well, ideally a lot of light. Um, there's not too much around today. It's quite a gray, wet, overcast day. Uh, so that meant I was really bumping the ISO up, which I don't really want to be doing. Um, trying to keep it as low as possible. So I'll come back and get them another day. It's good to know that they're there. Good to know they're near the path. Um, yeah, so onwards with the rest of the day. One thing I do love about John Forrest is if you're quiet enough, just the amount of kangaroos that can pop up out of anywhere. I saw one with its joey earlier on, which was really sweet, just trying to protect it from the rain, but the joey was trying to get out. Now there's one just in the path in front of me. Just really doesn't mind me coming up, approaching. And I love that, it's obviously such an iconic Australian animal. One of the ones I was so excited for. Oh, oh. okay, I spoke, spooked them all. And there was about five rather than one, so I should really stop vlogging and pay attention to what's actually going on around me. But what I was saying, see, just ignore my own advice and keep yapping anyway. Such an iconic Australian animal, one that I was so excited to see. I still do get so excited when I see them. Um, I'm sure to many people they're a bit blase and a bit of a nuisance these days, but to me, oh, they're just so funny, so expressionate. Yeah, I love them. Let's see if I can get some videos for you guys. The other advantage of coming out on a nice grey miserable day is when the sun does finally poke out, it's always a pleasant surprise. Ooh, there's a grey fantail just always past me. Um, lovely bird. I don't think I'll get him today, but um, maybe I'll get another one later on. Anyway, so that always uh, brings a smile to the face, a little bit of, bit of sunshine popping out. Stepping stones, always fun. So I'm off to you find some orchids that I, I say I know because I saw them on the weekend, but should be around here somewhere. In between my flower shots, I put my big, big lens back on because I'm more likely to want that quickly then if I'm gonna use my small macro, that's gonna be, typically I'm using that just for flowers. Um, so there's never any real time constraints. Whereas if I suddenly see an exciting bird sitting on a perch, I just wanna be able to grab my camera and go. Um, that's why I like always have my camera out. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's why I always put on big lens in between walking from area to area. Oh, I might have just walked past these orchids. I was not looking where I was going. So I've just found a beautiful orchid. Pinky purple, I think it might be a fairy, fairy orchid of some sort. Um, I've got a little little book and app at home, so I'll um, ID it properly later. I'll ID it properly later. But yeah, let's get some shots. This is lovely.
Well, I was having a bit of trouble with that orchid then. Um, really beautiful. Lovely freckled pattern underneath it. Um, but the wind is just really picking up now. Uh, the weather is getting blue and sunny, which is great, but the wind is getting worse, <coughs> uh, which for flower photography is certainly not ideal. So I think my new plan is to head back towards where the car is and focus on some of the larger parrot species that are around here. Um, hopefully they won't be bothered by the wind um, and they're pretty chill. Um, being that little bit bigger, although yeah, they move fast when they want to, they're pretty slow moving on the ground, which is um, what I'll be aiming to get now. I think typically on a day like this where I've not really planned too much of a subject, I've got a rough idea of what it'd be nice to photograph, um, but I like to keep fairly flexible. Um, that's why I take a mixture of little lenses out just to give myself choice. Um, and days like this is just more about me being, enjoying the outdoors, getting creative with shots. It's wonderful to not have that constraint of feeling pressured to, to see a certain subject actually. Just enjoy what's around. So a lot of my photography is done like this actually quite opportunistic with wildlife. Um, putting yourself obviously in the right habitat, um, in the right environment for certain subjects, but just going for a walk with the camera and seeing what turns up. The trick is not to walk too fast. Uh, in an ideal world, you're not talking to a camera, so you're not making too much noise. And then take time with any subject, whether it be a, a really small, brown, boring looking bird or a elaborate cockatoo. Jeez, that wind. As I'm heading back now to um, try and get those larger parrots that I was talking about, I'm probably gonna swing by where those fairy wrens were this morning. Spend a bit of time there. Now the sun's out, a bit more light. Um, so maybe they'll be perching around there again. So sadly, since being here, um, I've had no joy with the fairy wrens, but that is a-okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting to film them today or see them, so it was always a nice surprise. Um, whilst waiting for them, I have been getting some distant footage of a corella just mucking around in the tree. Uh, there's actually a pair of them. Um, so I've been trying to figure out if they've got a nest up there, can't really tell. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do now is head on down to where um, the ringneck parrots are um, and try and see them. They're pretty much always there. And I don't know why I've just said that because I feel like I've immediately screwed myself over. They're not gonna be there, are they? Why would I have done that? Why would I have said that to camera? So hopefully you can hear me over the waterfall behind me. I've set myself up looking at a, uh, I didn't actually know they had a feeding station here, which is quite exciting. Um, and probably why the ringnecks are so friendly. Um, so I've set myself up looking at the feeding station i'm gonna obviously not take photos of the feeding station that's very you know not very wild not very natural so the plan is there seems to be about three of them to keep landing uh, in and around the area i've currently set my uh, tripod up looking at a space in between two perches in which they're flying across um, and the plan is to try and catch some photos of them in flight flying between the perch Simple, right? And now belongs the game of waiting. That wasn't a sentence, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out and put it together. So I just got a photo then of the bird flying straight towards camera. Um, nice, crisp. Uh, the background, however, is a bit messy. 
So I think I'm going to reposition and try and get a clearer background. It's so important to think about foreground and background as well as your main subject. So I'm probably going to move on from here, although the birds are being very active. Um, I just can't get a clean background and it's really annoying me. Ideally you want a nice plain background. Yeah, and I just can't, can't seem to get it here. I've had to wander around to try and find different angles. There's a rule I have when photographing and that is always stay five more minutes. Um, and case in point just then, I don't think I videoed too much of it, but I was literally doing a piece to camera talking about how I'm gonna move on. And then the bird just landed, I mean, within an arm's length from me. So I managed to get some really nice photos, well, hopefully really nice photos of, um, of the bird just feeding naturally in the bush, which is ideal. Um, got a bit of got that behavior in there that I was looking for. It wasn't the flight that I was going for, but it was the behavior nonetheless. So really excited to see how they turn out. So I was just about to leave. Um, it's the thing, it takes me so long to go anywhere when I'm having a nice camera day. And I just saw this bottlebrush tree next to me um, that's out in bloom and looks absolutely stunning with the light on it. And I saw a, a wattle bird on there and I thought, oh, there's a little bench underneath. What a lovely place just to have a little cup of tea just before I head home and, and sort of finish my day off. And I've sat down here and I've just started hearing a chick calling. And it's actually a water chick in the bush behind me as well. That the parents are feeding on the tree in front of me and then just going to feed the chick behind. So I don't want to spook them. I don't want to cause any distress to the chick, but I'm just going to sit here for a minute enjoy what's going on and then hopefully once they become a bit settled with me being here I'll get some photos. Yes so uh, I didn't stay very long with those um, with the chick then or the wattler although getting some very nice views unfortunately my presence started attracting magpies and 28 which was distressing the parents and then distressing the chicken turn so I think it's um, best in those situations just to remove yourself and then obviously the moment I moved away the magpies followed me and left the um, chicken wattler alone yeah you've got to remember no matter what um, the welfare of the animals come first so the moment you're causing any distress or anything um, you have to remove yourself from the situation which I think is fine I'm sure if I wanted to I could have waited out there longer um, wait for the magpies to go bored and then creep back in but to be honest, I feel like it's been a pretty successful day. I'm just so happy with those 28s there at the end. Well, I've stayed here much longer than I expected to. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed coming on a, a sort of walkabout trip. I know this video didn't really have any solid direction of such other than just a jolly vlog. Whoa, I can't double thumbs up right now. Oh, there you go.